Hello everybody and welcome to a new chapter. This chapter is going to be about electricity and our first lesson will be about static electricity. So what is static electricity? Let's refresh our information about static electricity. We all know it. We've all been through it before. Let's just do a little refreshment to our information. So static electricity is all about charges which are not free to move. How is that? Well, sometimes when you change your clothes, uh, you feel a little spark or if you're leaving a car after a long trip and you hold the grip of the door you feel a little bit of electricity or a little spark moving through your hands well actually that is static electricity so what's the physical meaning or what's the physical explanation to that we all know that an atom is made out of a nucleus which has two main parts a neutron and a proton and we also, not, we also know that there is something called the electron, which is always orbiting around the nucleus. So an atom is made out of a nucleus, which has neutrons and protons. And we have something called the electron, which is orbiting around the atom. Well, there are two types of electrical charges. There are something called the electrons, which are negatively charged. And we have the protons, which are positively charged. But what about neutrons? Well, actually, neutrons are uncharged particles. Let's talk a little more in detail. What does this arrangement have to do with static electricity? Okay, so we know that if we have two charges, which are the same, they will repel. So this happens for positive charges, and it also happens to negative charges. Negative charges, when, they, when we get a negative charge closer to a negative charge, or a positive charge close to a positive charge, they will repel. But we also know that unlike charges will attract. Actually, that's supposed to be correct, but also electrons are moving quickly around the nucleus. So their movement is allowing them to not get sick, sucked into the nucleus. Well, that's not our main topic here. After refreshing this information about charges, positive, negative, and how they interact with each other, let's see what that has to do with static electricity. Because electrons orbit around the nucleus, they can move and leave the atom. But keep in mind, protons and neutrons cannot leave the atom because they are attached very close to each other inside the nucleus, okay? But not all materials allow electrons to move through them. So we can divide materials into two types. We can say that we have something called the conductors, which allow electrons to move easily through them. And on the other hand, we have the insulators. They do not allow electrons to move freely. They do not allow electrons to move freely through them. Well, there's something else called semiconductors. They're not our topic today, but you know, they allow electrons to move, but not that easily. Okay, let's say some facts about charges. We learned that there are positive and negative charges and what's the relation between them. So let's learn a little more facts about these charges. The unit of charge is called column, named after the, the famous scientist. Well, to make things more clear to us, what is a column or what is a charge? It's, it's approximately 6 million, million, million electrons. So if we were able to gather 6 million, million, million electrons, we will get the charge of one column, okay? But since one column is a large amount, we often use something called the micro columns. Micro columns, we will be using this unit a lot. And since we will be using it a lot, we, all, we must remember that one micro is equal to 10 to the power negative 6. So one electron will have approximately the charge of negative 1.6 multiplied by 10 to the power negative 19 columns. So what is the charge of one electron? It's negative 1.6 multiplied by 10 to the power negative 19. And this number we should memorize. But what about the negative sign? Well, negative, it's to remind us that the charge of the electron is negative. Transferring electrical charges or creating static electricity. How do we create the static electricity? Okay, we know that the positive and negative charges are always equal in an object. So they always cancel each other. Uh, any object, any object you're holding right now, your pen you're holding right now, it has no charge, right? So, if objects always have positive and negative charges equal to each other, how can we charge these objects? Well, obviously, you're going to say 
one of these objects must have either more negative charges or more positive charges exactly that is the answer to our question how can we make electrons move from one object to another because we said protons and neutrons do not move so we're counting on electrons to move but how can we make them move how can they move from one object to another there are two methods to charge objects the first method is called conduction and when you hear the word conduction you must imagine two things touching each other as an example if you rub your hair with a balloon it's a common trick we used to do a long time ago if we rub your hair with a balloon what simply happens here is that negative charges will leave your hair going to the balloon so now the balloon will have positive charges so now the balloon will have negative charges while your hair on the other side will have a positive charge and this method works for both conductors and insulators you can charge a conductor or an insulator using this very simple method which is conduction it needs contact between these two objects you must there must be contact between two objects and able to charge them using conduction okay but does that mean that we can charge objects without them touching each other yes exactly we have something or another method called induction so what is induction let's see this very simple trick we have a rod which is negatively charged as you can see now when we get this rod closer to something or to a simple metal sphere we know that the metal sphere has positive and negative charges but when we get this rod closer to it what will happen it's very important to keep in mind that it this is an insulated stand what does that mean that means that electrons cannot move through it and leave towards the ground or leave the sphere so nothing is allowed to leave the sphere because it's insulated we call this an insulated sphere okay so the first step is when we bring a negatively charged rod near this metal sphere electrons will move away from the rod once again it doesn't mean that the positive charges will move towards the rod no that didn't happen negative charges which were here and here and here they all moved and ran away from the negatively uh, charged rod because we know that similar uh, similar charges repel so since protons cannot move or since positive charges cannot cannot move we see that the negative charges they moved away from this from this negatively charged rod the second step we will do something called grounding or earthing in other words grounding or earthing is we are breaking the insulation of this sphere we said that this sphere was insulated because electrons were not allowed to move away from it but what if we connect it with a conductor what if we bring a conductor right here and we connect it to the ground why the ground well actually the ground it has a source of infinite electrons it can take as much electrons and at the same time it can give as much electrons so if we allow the electrons to run away further from this rod because remember we have a rod that is negatively charged here we are allowing electrons to run even farther away from this rod and the only way it can run through it will run through this wire which is a conductor towards the ground okay now imagine that we moved it we removed this wire we will finish out with a sphere that only has positive charges well, in other words, it doesn't mean that it only has positive charges. It has less negative charges. Because it has less negative charges, it will be positively charged. So this is an example of induction. And it can also work with other types of charges. We will be solving more problems and examples on that in the next video. So stay tuned.